congenital adrenal hyperplasia, or CAH, is the topic. And the best way to talk about this is with a diagram. So here is a diagram of the adrenal hormone synthesis. And as you can see, you have cortisol and aldosterone as two of the most important hormones that are synthesized in the body. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia, CAH, involves deficiency of an enzyme. And in particular, this enzyme right here, 21 hydroxylase. Now, when you don't get this enzyme, this pathway that goes all the way down to making aldosterone does not happen. And also, this pathway that involves making cortisol does not happen. So you don't get cortisol and you don't get aldosterone. So that's the first problem. The next problem is that these precursors build up because they're not being converted into anything else because this enzyme is deficient, can't do the conversion. So when those precursors build up, they get shunted into this pathway. And this pathway produces these three. And those three are collectively known as androgens. And those androgens can cause virilization in females. So I want you to understand this before I go forward because this is the key to CAH. So with that diagram in mind, what do you have? You have essentially a genetic disorder that is due to the deficiency of 21 hydroxylase. And when this enzyme is deficient, you get inadequate synthesis of aldosterone and cortisol. And because those hormones are not produced, the precursors then build up and are shunted in the other direction to produce androgens. So you have an excess of androgens. And these go on to cause virilization in females. So that is the absolute basic understanding of CAH. The mode of inheritance of CAH is autosomal recessive and 90 percent of cases of CAH involve the deficiency of the enzyme known as 21 hydroxylase. So we'll focus really on this enzyme deficiency. There are other deficiencies that are part of CAH. For example, 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency. But I'll concentrate just on this one. So if you do indeed have 21 hydroxylase deficiency, you will not be able to produce aldosterone. And you will also have a deficiency of cortisol. So I wanted to quickly show that diagram again so you understand that this isn't magic. This is coming directly from the diagram. Here's the 21 hydroxylase and if it's deficient you will not progress in these pathways. You won't get cortisol and you won't get aldosterone. That enzyme is critical. So if you do have deficient aldosterone, what type of problems will occur. Well first do you remember what aldosterone does? In the nephron it brings back sodium into your bloodstream and it kicks out potassium into your urine. So if you don't have aldosterone you will actually not bring back sodium into your bloodstream and therefore you will have hyponatremia, low sodium in the blood and you will not kick out potassium into the urine, so you will keep the potassium, resulting in hyperkalemia, high potassium in the blood. 
And also, you remember, sodium brings back water. So if you're not bringing back water, your blood pressure will be low. So you'll be in a state of hypotension. If you're deficient in cortisol, patient will have hypoglycemia. And due to a lack of negative feedback, patient will have an increased ACTH. And then as we talked about in the diagram, this shunt happens. All these precursors right here, here, all these precursors will be in excess and they will be shunted to the right and they will then produce these three androgens. So you will have an excess of androgens. Symptoms of CAH. Blood pressure will be low on physical exam and most visibly in female patients because remember this virilization only happens in females you will see a lot of telltale signs so for example the genitalia of females will show clitoral enlargement early puberty can also occur but in males the genital development is normal. Now I wanted to expand a little bit more on virilization because it's very important. Here is a list of the signs and symptoms of virilization and they include excessive facial hair, deepening of the voice, increased sex drive, smaller than normal breast, enlarged clitoris, irregular menstrual cycles, and baldness, and also acne. So if you have a clinical vignette that talks about a lot of these signs, symptoms, then that's a huge clue to pointing you in the right direction. Diagnosis. Well, the good news about diagnosis is that there's a lot of things that you can measure that will help you. First, you can measure serum levels of something called 17-hydroxyprogesterone. and this will be elevated. Now, you might think, well, what is this? Well, if you go back to the diagram, 17-hydroxyprogesterone is right here. And the reason it's elevated so much is because it cannot break down because 21-hydroxylase is deficient. So that is a key component to the diagnosis. You can also measure levels of cortisol, and aldosterone and those of course will be low because they were not produced because of the deficiency of 21 hydroxylase enzyme but androgen levels will be very high because they were produced in excess and then also because aldosterone was low and we talked about this earlier you'll get hyponatremia so sodium levels will be low and you will get hyperkalemia in the blood, so potassium levels will be high. Treatment of CAH essentially involves replacing the two vital hormones that are not produced in adequate amounts, and those are cortisol and aldosterone. Cortisol is, of course, a corticosteroid, and aldosterone is known as a mineralocorticoid. And the medications that are most commonly given to replace these are hydrocortisone, corticosteroid replacement, and for mineralocorticoid replacement, fludrocortisone is used. So keep those two in mind. So now a few vignettes. A 16-year-old, previously healthy female, presents with acne, hirsutism, and irregular menses. Her pubertal history reveals breast development at age 9 and pubic hair development at age 7. And she reported one episode of vaginal spotting at approximately 11 and a half years of age. A family history indicates some female relatives 
with symptoms of infertility, irregular menses, and PCOS or alopecia. She is significantly shorter than her target height. This vignette presents a lot of the symptoms or signs of virilization. And when you have a choice, the one that really screams out is choice A. Because a lot of these other options that they have given don't have the same level of virilization, or any at all, actually. Next, a XX genotypic infant is born with ambiguous genitalia. Lab exams reveal hypoglycemia, hyperkalemia, and salt wasting. Serum 17-hydroxy progesterone is markedly increased, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis. So when they say salt wasting, what they're really saying is low levels of sodium. And just to remind you, 17-hydroxy progesterone, what is that? 17-hydroxy progesterone is right here. I'll color it in green. And if you recall, why is that elevated so much? Well, because you are deficient in 21 hydroxylase. So this path cannot move forward, and if it doesn't move forward and eventually produce cortisol, this precursor will just keep building up. And that's why it's elevated. So the most likely diagnosis is 21 hydroxylase deficiency. And finally, which of the following is the basis of standard treatment for the most common form of adrenal hyperplasia, the androgenizing condition 21-hydroxylase deficiency? So basically what they're asking is how do you treat this? Now if you keep in mind that cortisol and aldosterone are deficient, you have to replace these. So you replace cortisol with hydrocortisone, and you replace aldosterone by giving a mineralocorticoid called fludrocortisone. So in this question, both choices are correct.